This is what you might picture when you think of the Middle Ages. The days of knights, protecting castles and defending the honor of damsels in distress. While tales of chivalry were often just legend, for most girls and women in medieval times, distress, hardship, pain and suffering was a historical fact of life. Those born into noble families had easier lives than those born as peasants or serfs. But all females were considered inferior to males by nature and by law. Laws were set by lords and kings and by the male heads of the Roman Catholic Church, a powerful influence on society in the Middle Ages. Women were taught to obey men, their fathers, and after they married, their husbands. The primary job opportunity for most women was to have and raise children. Girls were often married by age 14 and had their first baby by age 15. Medical knowledge and care was crude. Dying while giving birth was the most common cause of death in young women. A famous medieval poem, Piers Plowman, described the average peasant woman as rising a knight to rock the cradle and also carding, combing, clouting, and washing wool. Spinning sheep's wool into thread and yarn was such common woman's work that the tool used, a spindle or a distaff, became a symbol of the peasant woman. Women living in medieval towns had a better chance of learning a trade by helping their husbands and family businesses. While they were generally banned from joining the powerful professional union guilds or charging as much as men, there were women merchants, druggists, barbers, and brewers. There were also many women like the character of the wife of Bath in Geoffrey Chaucer's poem, The Canterbury Tales, one of the most famous stories from the Middle Ages. The wife of Bath was an expert cloth maker and a woman of some wealth and property, which she inherited when her husband died. Women could only own property if they inherited it from their fathers or late husbands and lost that property if they married or remarried. Property laws were no different for high-born women from the upper classes. Although when their husbands were away on business at the royal court or fighting wars, Many noble women had the power to manage the family castle and estate, called a fief. These ladies of the manor would manage crops and herds and all of the serfs who lived in the fiefdom. Noble women also had more access to education and servants, which allowed them to become artists, musicians, and writers. One of the most noted women in medieval Europe was 14th century poet and author Christine de Pizan. Her writings, especially on the virtue and value of women, earned her wealth and fame. Yet lack of equality and opportunity made even this accomplished woman feel, as she wrote, most unfortunate because God had made me inhabit a female body in this world. One of the only alternatives for an upper-class woman who did not want to be a wife and mother came from the same organization that restricted women in so many ways, the Roman Catholic Church. Women who became nuns could lead lives of work, prayer, and educational study. Nuns could rise to become the leaders of abbeys and monasteries, sometimes even overseeing male priests. Near the end of the Middle Ages, things began to change for women in some of the more developed city-states, such as Florence, where women were allowed into universities. But it would be centuries before women in Europe would win the first rights and freedoms that hundreds of millions of women have today.